protein, carbs, fats, or macronutrients. Okay. And that is what makes a balance. You need to have all three in your meals. We also yeah. feel good. We're like, look at me with my carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so healthy. I'm all about adding in versus taking out. Sign me up. I got compliments left, right, and center yeah. from everyone and their dog. Literally their dog would come up to me and say, girl, yeah. you lost weight. Yeah. You look great. I need my sass back. Oh, you too. Well, if you're done with a hot mess and ready to cook up some hot mess, mama, I got you. Hey, I'm Dev, Mama at Sass and Smalls. You're listening to Sass and Small Talk. We're going to talk about all the things, the mess, the cleanups, chasing the kids while chasing the dream. Join us here as we continue to find perfection in the imperfection of family life while keeping things as sassy as they've always been before the drool, meltdowns, and potty mishaps came into the picture. I'm always looking for a way to fight through the funk of mamahood and find my sass. And I know I'm not alone. So grab your poison, throw on your comfy, and let's talk. Dallin, I need my sass back. Hey, everyone. Super pumped to have the most amazing guest that I have been waiting. This has been a year in the making. I have been waiting for this lovely, lovely mama to come join me on the show before the show was even on the air. She's just been waiting for the green light. And so I'm super excited. Today, we're going to be talking about food freedom and healing our relationship with food with Randa Dirksen. You know her as the entrepreneur's nutritionist on IG. She is the host of the Realistic Nutrition Podcast. She's a certified holistic nutritionist a culinary nutrition expert, certified sports nutrition consultant. That was a mouthful. And she's a mama of two beautiful kiddos. You will see her on IG sharing some wonderful behind the scenes mama life on IG, which I really thoroughly enjoy. Um, She's also a self-proclaimed reformed food fad dieter. Am I right, Rhonda? Okay. (laughs) You'll also find her at radadirksen.com. I'll be sharing the links on my show notes as well. Um, but we just want to get to to know our wonderful Randa. She lives up to her podcast namesake where she talks about the realistic life of nutrition, keeping things so real, especially regarding saying no to deprivation and restriction, which is definitely something in my vocabulary. She talks about food strategies and dispels food myths. And she's always a wealth of information for health tips and tasty recipes, which I am known to steal off of her. She's amazing, specifically for busy moms. But as far as I'm concerned, she can benefit all moms, busy moms, stay-at-home moms. But her focus, I understand, entrepreneurial moms working moms. Her mission is to help these busy moms take control of their nutrition and stop fearing food. She recently launched the program Food Freedom Your Way. It's the complete system to help you lose weight without sacrificing your favorite food. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you, Randa. Wow. So this isn't just my makeup. Like I'm blushing after all. That. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Uh, so the entrepreneurs and nutritionists, like that's what my name, like on the block card of Instagram says, but my handle is at random nutrition, just to make it ah, simple for everyone. Yeah. Very good. I'm random nutrition everywhere. You, even if you type it into your, my website, it, it carries over to randadirksen.com. So what an introduction. Huh? Ah. Hi. Yeah. It has been a while. Hey, this conversation. It's been I want to say a year I've been, I've been pestering Randa about being on my show and I had the microphone, I had the computer, I had the handle, I had it all. I just needed to press go. And she's been waiting for the green light. She's like, all right, I'm, I'm on. And I just kept, I kept saying it's coming. It's coming. I I need you on there. So you are finally on Sass and Small Talk and I'm super excited. I am here. Oh my gosh. Excited. Now I have to just say real quick, this lovely woman has been in my life uh, online. We have not met in person since we were both, you know, in the blogosphere and we, fun fact, had our second babies birth side around like two weeks, three weeks kind of apart. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So she's got a, a little boy, nine years old. Nine. Yeah. And a little 
I want to call her baby girl because I call mine baby boy. So they're just a few months apart. Three years old? Yes. A three-year-old. Yeah, mine was born in May. Yeah, and I, mine was June. So we were holding each other's hand over Instagram, talking about yeah. the bumps and bruises of pregnancy <laughs> after all we've been through, right? Yeah. yeah. And so... Yeah. I really appreciate it. She's always been holding my hand. So whether it was like, she was always a little bit ahead of me with, with this pregnancy. So hold on this part is going to suck or whatever, you know, (laughs) you're you're like, hang on your turn's coming. So it's been a lot of leaning on each other, but I've been really leaning on Randa for nutrition. And I think the reason why I wanted you specifically on the show here is because the top of 2022, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now as we all know, we're still kind of at the, is this the fourth wave? I've lost track. The fourth wave. So we're at the fourth, fourth, we're in it. (laughs) We're at the fourth wave of the pandemic. And I mean, truth be told, we're still recovering from the holidays, right? Um, The motivations and the pressures of, of setting these new year's resolutions. I'm, I'm the queen of writing them down. And I'm also the queen of not really following through. And one of my biggest things is, changing my relationship with food, healing it, because I have been pretty much eating my feelings. And I think you would be just the perfect person to talk to. um, Because I think a lot of moms are feeling the pressures of having the, you know, the kids home. A lot of people are going online right now for their kids. There's just a lot of eating, snacking at midnight, crying themselves into a tizzy while eating chips, a bowl of chips and pizza and all that fun stuff. What I love about Randa, she doesn't judge. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't encourage any sort of deprivation. So I, I just wanted to talk to you about that. Like, I'm sure you have a lot of clients turning to you about this post-holiday phenomenon. Yeah. Actually, one of my clients, we had our meeting this week and we were just talking and she said, you know, I ate a lot of crap over the holidays. And then she looked at me, she said, I didn't even feel bad about it. And that right there was showing the mindset shift. And she ate quote unquote crap because there's no good or bad food. Let's just be there. It did not cheat on you. It did not, you know, break your grandma's foot. Like it didn't do anything (laughs) bad. Um, But she was able to also enjoy the food she liked, but also stop. So yeah, she enjoyed them, but she also knew to stop. And that because the foods weren't bad, she didn't overindulge. It's like a simple little flip of the switch. It really is. And it's, it's insane. But it's hard though, Randa. Oh, so uh, I, I am the queen of emotional eating. Okay. I still do it. It is something that I work on too. I'm not just on this soapbox being like, oh, you need to stop doing this. I am practicing what I'm preaching. And one of the things that helped me, like at Halloween, I love pe- like Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, mm. Love them. And in the past, I would see one and just one after the other and just go, go, go. And then I realized there's a 7 Eleven down the road. I can go anytime I want to have that peanut butter cup. So I'll have one, maybe two. And then it's not scarce. It's not a scarcity thing, these candies. I'm like, I can go anytime. If I want one tomorrow, I can go to 7-Eleven or steal my kid's candy in this case and have some tomorrow. Little tricks we have to play on our brain. 100%. I've been removing things from my pantry and it works to some degree, but then the cravings kicks in and then I'll go on my Instacart because we love Instacart. And I'll be like, I need this, 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 and this. And guess what I do, Randa? This is Randa's most favorite, sarcastically said, most favorite words is I'm starting Monday. I'll have it. It'll be around Tuesday because I usually give up around Tuesday night (laughs) on my Monday promises. And then I'll say, I'll start Monday. So I'm going to eat this, 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 this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm going to go cray cray on Sunday. And then I'm going to start Monday. Mm -hmm. And I I love that you actually bring up this whole anti-starting Monday movement because it is something that's in my vocabulary every single week. I've said I'm starting Monday for 52 weeks the last year. Me too. And I'm sure there's a ton of, you know, moms that say that too. So how is that super detrimental? Okay. So 
you it's, you know, beginning of January, I'm sure there's some people here that are like, I started this diet. I'm doing whole 30. I'm doing all these things and they have a good day. And usually it's like a day or two, maybe three, maybe even make it to Thursday. But then all of a (laughs) sudden those cravings hit and you're just like, you know, I'm going to have one. And then you feel bad about one piece of chocolate, one slice of cake. And you're like, screw it. If I'm, I may as well go all in. And then you're having the chips and then you want something sweet after the chips. Yes. And it's just binging, binging and binging. And then the next day you feel like crap. So you deprive yourself even more. You're like, no, I'm not going to even eat this breakfast because I ate so much yesterday. I have to cut my calories <laughs> so much more. <laughs> and then you do it again that night. And then it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to start again on Monday. I'm going to have the weekend where you eat everything. And then you actually gain weight versus if you allowed yourself a treat every night, that wouldn't happen. You would just be having a normal eating pattern. And when we put the word diet into play, we are thinking about we're changing everything for a limited time. That is not sustainable. You need to do something that you can do. And this is individual to everyone you can do for the rest of your life. Um, I had a podcast guest the other day and she, I might butcher this now. I even just put it on my Instagram, but it said your habits are supposed to last a lifetime, not just for January. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't even last past like first week of January. (laughs) You know, there's no, like I said, no bad foods. I've lost eight pounds in the last month and a half because I am on a little bit of a weight loss journey myself. And I had pizza last night for dinner. I went and ordered some Papa John's or my husband and I had pizza and then I had a breadstick. And I, I'm good. I love it. And you, and you feel fine. I feel fine. And I don't feel like I have to eat everything in sight because you screwed up once. I had pizza. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And you even though it's not even screw up. Yeah, I know. But we, we tell ourselves that because yeah. we're so mean to ourselves. We are. We are. We're our biggest bullies. And we are. It's, yeah. it's that word failure. We think we failed and we didn't into life. This is all an experiment. Like even if you're eating according to a plan. Yeah. And I say, I gave you your plan and you slipped up that first day. It's still not a failure. You're still experimenting. And that's why, like when I coach my clients in every, even in my program, Things are fluid. Things, Mm -hmm. it's never a hard, no hard. You have to be at this point. I think that's why we set ourselves up for this kind of, you know, or we even sabotage ourselves because we have these expectations that might be unrealistic. And then we get disappointed, turn around and say, well, that didn't work. We're just going to give up altogether. And I, I, you know, I'm I'm speaking for myself, but I feel like I've heard this you know, I've had this conversation with so many people, specifically, you know, moms, we made this amazing choice to start a family. Um, Some of us had pregnancies that uh, our our bodies never got back into that, you know, the old body that we used to have. But I have to say, before I even got married, I had this mindset, because there's this expectation. I mean, back in the day, I'm a lot older than you, But back in the day, I never had any access to this healthy mindset that's on our social media accounts now, which I really do appreciate that the whole idea of body positivity, body respect, all of that is it's embraced, it's celebrated. And people are really, really vulnerable online and saying, hey, this is my body and I love it. I love me. And that is really good messaging for my daughter, your daughter, for, you know, the next generation. But I'm still old school a little bit, right? Oh. And, right? And, and, and I, I still feel like, yay for her. That's awesome. I'm super supportive. I'm, a lot of people I'm following are just people who just embrace their curves and their, you know, all the stuff. But then I still look at myself and kind of go, well, I can't, you know, I I measure myself against the scale. Sometimes I try not to. I definitely don't do this in front of my daughter. This is another thing I want to talk to you about after. But I I definitely keep this on the DL. And my my husband loves my curves. And, uh, you know, it's it's that it's what you said. We're our biggest bullies. And so it does go to this deep rooted childhood, you know, this body shaming and the comments that we've had. And I'm not 
I'm not throwing my parents under the bus. This was never in our vocabulary at home, but other kids even, you know, right. and I was always a bigger girl. I'm shorter. So I'm always the short gal. And there's tip, there's tips and tricks that I followed as I was growing up. But when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was a young adult, you couldn't hide if your legs were bigger. You couldn't hide if your arms were bigger and people would mention it. And then because negativity bias, where we just listen 99% of the time we're getting compliments and support and encouragement, but the 1%, that one person, that little tiny person that said to us, wow, you, you kind of, you look, you got a little bit of happy fat going on. I, I, I went back home to our, um, to my parents' country, to my, to my country. Um, and they absolutely embrace all beauty, of course, but there was some comments of, you know, oh, you're very fat now, or this, <laughs> you look so healthy. You must be eating a lot. And they mean well, they mean yeah. well, they mean well. I had someone said, hey, I'm going to give you all my fat clothes. You look great. Now, like a double sided comment Thanks. there. But why did I remember that? I don't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning, but I remember that comment. So these comments stick, these body shaming comments that they don't mean, but then I translate it to, well, it's the truth. And I'm going to just keep telling myself that so that I can motivate myself to, to, to be better, do better, but what's better, right? So I, how do you get to that deep rooted place? Because these, these are things that go way beyond just We'll change your mindset. So what could you advise us mamas who are really taking some scars from childhood? You know, I, I'm there too. So I'm 33. I graduated in 2006. Do you not remember what were on the magazines at that time? And even before it was Nicole Richie mm. for saying she looks good. And then, oh, she's too skinny and yeah. all of this. It yeah. was that age group. Um, we would, even in high school, the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Mm. We idolize those women and now idolize women are coming out on TikToks and saying, yeah, I had a liquid only diet for two weeks before that. Oh, good. For that show. Heidi Klum, remember when she got back on the runway, it was like, what, like four weeks or something after giving birth and she had an oh. app. Oh my God. Like, oh, oh, Ow. what am I doing wrong? But yeah, those comments, you know, I'm five foot two. I've been told my whole life I'm short and stocky. I'm, I've mm. always been described as stocky. I've got powerful legs. Same thing arms, legs. And I always hated my arms always. And I, I still have some issues. Like, let's be honest. I'm not perfect here. I'm not like, Oh my gosh, love your body. But body respect is about loving your body during the journey. And mm -hmm. you might have to fake it till you make it. Yeah. You might have to lie to yourself at first. How I started after I had Vivian, you know, I knew I didn't want to continue this, this, spiral or diet after diet and restriction. And, you know, I always lifted weights, but I did it so I could get smaller. And yeah. then I went into this mindset where like, no, 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 I'm going to lift these weights so I can carry this freaking car seat because those things are heavy. Yeah. Because like you're standing there, right? Remember like it's, it hurts. It so hurts. I, I started with that and all of a sudden the car seat started feeling lighter and I'm like, Oh, my arms are getting strong. And I would look in the mirror and even when I didn't believe it, even when I was just like, oh my gosh, you don't look great. No, 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 no. You should have been smaller by now. It was like, your arms are strong. Your legs are strong. You look great. You're happy. I would smile at myself in the mirror because I read that even if you don't believe it in the moment, your body starts to like your mind will start to believe these things as you say it. Mm. And I, I would do that. I would take pictures and I would just do everything I could to learn to love myself, learn to love myself, learn to eat properly. And it wasn't just for my daughter, it was for my son too. When mm -hmm. he was in kindergarten or grade one, he was running around the island before we were going to school back when we lived in Prince George. And I'm like, what are you doing? Burning calories. Oh gosh. What? My son, oh he's like, he's skinny. Like he's a little boy, right? Like he's, yeah. he plays a lot. And I'm like, why? And he's just like, cause I'm getting fat. Oh, God. One, I don't, fat is the F word in my house. I, I say what we think the F word is all the time for my kids. <laughs> but I don't say fat. 
And I was like, where did he get that from? Because I don't say that anymore. Mm. And it, it was from a relative. Oh, they God. hear it. And it broke my heart. And I was like, okay, I need to have like these different conversations about food for my kids too. So when we'd have dinner, I'd be like, this does this for your body. You know, mm-hmm. you, you have to dumb it down, obviously. It's like, oh yeah, green yeah. beans. Like, let's have some of those. And that narrative to my kids also became ingrained in me. This food's going to give me energy. Mm. I used to work out to be skinny and I don't do that anymore. I do it for my mental health. I do it for muscle definition. Yeah. I have, I still have body goals guys. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to recomposition and stuff like that with your body. I, I, I want to show some definition in my arms. They've always been a trouble spot for me, but now it's more about, I want to see how strong they are. So it's more like a bonus to have these aesthetics of body, of, of weight loss and, and eating well. The aesthetics is kind of an afterthought, which I really appreciate because it's always been the main motivation. Right. And something that I suggest that's helped me, don't compare yourself. Like, okay, someone like yeah. you and me, you sound like we're similar body types. Similar. Similar. You know, uh, we have the powerful legs we probably shouldn't compare ourselves to someone that's like six foot tall with long lean legs. Um, and I started following a lot of people that looked like me on Instagram and I saw how strong they were. How strong. I love that. So even like some of them are super fit. Some of them just look like me now, some of them are whatever, but I see what they're doing and how they respond to their body and they're working out and, yeah, like it's there's I love that great people out there killing yes. it in the fitness and nutrition game, and they look like me. And I'm like, oh, this is normal. Like, <laughs> yeah, we do have to have these conversations with ourselves. You know, you're absolutely right. When I lived in LA, um, there's all types of bodies that that were was in my face, but the resounding body that I saw was perfection because perfection in the society's standards because they were in front of the camera. There was a lot of models and and people who were in, you know, beauty. That, that's that's the area I worked in. I was I was um I was baby stylista before I became Sass and Smalls. And part of the reason why I left the world, it was a fashion world and I loved it. It was for kids and I loved it, but I was even seeing kids whose bodies I was like Now, if I had that body when I was like, terrible, like, why am I having these conversations in my head, in my head? But they were, they were loud enough. Like these conversations were loud enough that I was starting to absorb, like, this is what normal is. Mm -hmm. Normal is, you know, five, five. Well, you can fix it, fix that by throwing on some heels. Okay, cool. That's average height. Let's, let's be average. height. Now I have to be average weight, 99 pounds. (laughs) <laughs> which is not average weight, but I have that in my head because you see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Now that's not the case. And that's what I do love. You're absolutely right. I think part of the reason I was so attracted to your account is because, okay, I'm trying not to say this, so I'm self-deprecating, but just to be really honest with you, I do look at you as ideal Deb, but the makings of Deb, right? My, my Deb in my best state is Randa Dirksen. You're absolutely right. I was very much attracted to the fact that I could relate to you. You're beautiful. I'm short and stocky. With oh, stop it. Don't say it. <laughs> European <laughs> descent. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, like it's not, not this exotic beauty. I'm just like. I'm you just- are an exotic beauty. This is what's so crazy. The, the, the men that I've dated or about the boys, whatever. And my husband have always said, I love a little bit of something, something. On my women, I don't want, I mean, it sounds so objectifying, but you know what I mean? They don't don't, don't want to break them when they hug them. I mean, let's keep it PG here. Even just holding my hand, my husband likes that I have some meat and some grip. He's always, always filling my bucket. But again, it goes back to this, right? It's not what you hear. It's also the choices we're making. Mm -hmm. Choosing to look at, at, at the standard more realistically. Say you met your goal weight. Maybe, maybe your goal weight was 120 pounds. Okay. Yes. Say you met it. it. Is. <laughs> oh. do, you think you're, do you think you're still going to be happy? Or are you going to find something else that you're going to nitpick? Oh, well, maybe your cellulite's still there and you're like, oh, now what? Maybe, you know, you're, yeah. you know, that's why body respect is so great. Cause being appreciative of your body along the way 
Mm-hmm. It's great. And another thing, I don't like goal weights. I'm going to just say this. Here's why. Okay. Talk to me. Because if you say you lost, I don't know, like 50 pounds, so you, you know, and you got to your goal weight or close. So you lost 50 pounds and you're five pounds away from your goal weight. You're still beating yourself up. You're not appreciating that you're lost 50 pounds. You're always like, what's next? I still got five pounds to go. You're still in that mode where you're just like, this isn't good enough. This isn't good enough. Mm. And that's always the hardest one is the last five, 10 pounds, right? Oh gosh. That's, I mean, (laughs) pandemic, like, Hey, we all have gained weight during this time. Well, maybe not all of us, but I mean, I have, I, I understand this and I'm still 10 pounds away, but I realized too, even when I got close to a goal in the past, say, you know, it was 145 pounds and I got to 148, I realized I'm not going to look much different than this. Mm -hmm. Like what is that extra three pounds? Like, why would I beat myself up about these extra three pounds when it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change my happiness. My clothes are still going to fit the same. Um, And that's something to Mm -hmm. think about. And I have, I say that with clients. They're like, oh, I want to lose 15 pounds. I'm like, okay, cool. Like I, I leave it at that. But as they get closer, it's like, well, how are you feeling? Like, and it's about feeling great and confident and feeling in control of your food choices versus a number on the scale. Cause the scale's bull guys, like there's other ways to measure your progress where it doesn't show. Uh, I know it sounds like I'm sure many of us have heard this before, but there's other ways to measure your progress. And the scale is a small, small part of that. Cause it lies a lot too. It does, especially as women. Mm, Yes. What do you recommend for measurement? Uh, Measuring yourself with uh, like not a tape measure, not a carpenter tape measure, but like a seamstress tape measure. You can go to the dollar store and buy a dollar uh, seamstress kit and make sure it has the tape and use that. Mm, Because mm -hmm. inches, although your weight may stay the same, your inches will go down. Ah. Um, And photos. Take photos of your body because again, sometimes your inches may stay the same, your weight stays the same, but you can see it in your body. It's Mm -hmm. changing. Things are moving to different areas. Maybe you're getting a little bit more padding on the booty and your belly's getting a little flatter. Hey, yeah. (laughs) I mean, there's other ways to tell, or maybe, you know, my arms, for example, they're not changing in measurement, but I can see the there definition. is a little bit of a something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do three different ways to measure things, and of course, there's always trying on your jeans. How do they feel? Things like that. But I find measurements and photos are my favorite. Okay. And when clients say, I want to lose 15 pounds, I'm like, okay, cool. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, we'll see. Like it's, we'll give it a, you know, it's, it's not always about the way you might be surprised. Let me ask you something though. Is taking photos and doing the measurements, is that feeding into that kind of the obsessive, I want the change? Or are we saying, hey, listen, it's true. We want the change. We, it will make us feel better. Let's be respectful to ourselves about it. And this is how we measure. I do look at the scale a little bit like the enemy, but some days I look at the scale as well. You know, it just keeps me on top of it. Like just to remind me, because, okay, I'm going to be honest with you, Randa. I, And this is an ongoing conversation I have with my husband. He is like you. He's the male version of you. He absolutely says slow and steady wins the race. Everything in moderation. He says all the, you know, he says all the stuff to me. And I'm like, well, it's easy for you to say because you're six feet tall and you're this and your body is wonderful and blah, blah, blah. And even if you ate 5,000 muffins today, you'll still look amazing, right? Just because he's all stretched out and all this. But I like what he says, but the reason why I don't listen And I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to be one of your stubborn clients here. Let's back up for a second. I did keto. I did keto. I'm just going to say it. It started off motivated by my daughter. She has a condition that actually is benefited medically by keto. We've got a Hallmark movie about it. We have doctors backing it up and I've seen it. It does improve her condition. It does, but it's a dirty keto. Like I don't do measurement with her, anything like that. It's just more like, let's ease up a little bit on the carbs and let's just put a little bit more fat in your life. And it's been really good for her because it is good for the brain, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? Because whatever the science behind fats and brain and all this. So there has been some improvement. I had that as my motivation at first. And then 
three months later, I did this because I didn't want her to be alone in this. And I started getting jealous too. She's like, she's eating bacon. I'm like, I want some bacon. So I did the thing with her, right? And so did my husband. And guess what? 60 pounds between the two of us, George and I, we lost 60 pounds within three months. And I got to say every week, um, anyone who's joining our conversation, by the way, this is not my point. <laughs> I'm not trying oh, to encourage. Yeah. I'm just saying this is my journey. I got immediate results. I would check the scale, honestly, maybe every couple of days, very obsessively, but I was so proud of myself. And I'd be like, well, I stick to it because it's working. It's working. And so my mentality from my history of doing quick fix fad diets and you know keto, the keto lifestyle, dirty keto lifestyle, I got quick results. So it helped me kind of keep going. My husband, on the other hand, he did lose all the weight. He felt good. We both looked good. Then the pandemic hit. One of my good friends passed away. We, it was a really bad week after I hit sl- close to my goal. Of course, like you said, there's always a five, 10, 10 pounds to go. And I was so close to going, hey, I'm okay now. I'm going to now kick into high gear of balancing my diet. I'm going to do this. No, instead, I ate my feelings and the 30 pounds came right back on with some friends. We ended up 50 pounds more, right? So I was like, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep trying when I'm ready to go back to keto, which I did. So I started Monday every, every week for 52 weeks, started Monday, started Monday, started Monday. And then I realized, oh my God, I, I, I need pasta. I need rice. I'm hungry. I'm Asian. I need my rice. Give me my rice. I can't, who eats, who eats meat without rice? Sorry, at least in my family. So it was really difficult. And so, but where I get the problem here is that I'm not seeing any change. And that's where I'm like, all these wonderful, smart women like Randa and smart men like my husband are telling me balance. So how do we get to a point where we're like, okay, well, I'm going to start seeing progress if I just stick to it. But let's be balanced at the same time. Keto is just so tricky, because it pulls you into this like, I don't know, I just feel like keto has given me a hint it's almost like i'm being a devil's advocate here but he the, keto has actually kind of given me that platter that golden platter this is what life is guess what i got compliments left right and center yeah. from everyone and their dog literally their dog would come up to me and say girl you <laughs> lost weight yeah. you look great and i'm talking like everybody everybody was like, you look awesome. And of course, all my, you know, any, any like relatives who'd be like, oh, you're very fat, you know, now they're like, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah. You know? And so I'm like, oh, you want to, what are you, what are you talking about? And deep inside, I'm like, it's working. It's working. Right. So how do we find a nice, healthy balance of I'm seeing progress. I'm doing it the right way. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, Sorry. First. No, no, no. This is good. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm like you. So I used to get compliments up the wazoo when I used to start myself. I lived off 1200 calories, which is what a toddler eats oh, for right years. Down. And I got the compliments. I was a miserable human. I was hungry and I would okay. binge and do this horrible restrictive cycle. Mm. And yet I've never been complimented so much in my life. And it, that does something to our brain. Like, and I, I know where you're coming from there. Um, okay. First of all, for those who don't know, for those who don't not follow me, I don't like keto. I, I don't yeah. like it. This is a different story with your daughter. It was, it's totally different when she has a condition, right? So that's totally fine. I would never tell someone, no, don't put your kid on it. No, like this is, you listen to your physician, but for you, I understand you want that quick fix because you hear everyone and their dog talking about how they lost that huge drop right away with keto. Yeah. And what a lot of it is, is carbohydrates, okay. your cells hold water, right? When you have your carbohydrates and it releases it. And the majority of what you lose in the beginning is water weight. Yeah. Some of it's going to be weight, but water weight. And if you're restricting your calories too much, you're also losing muscle, which is something we don't want to do. Mm. So what a balanced approach looks like. So I teach in coaching in my food freedom race. I teach macros. 
You count macros. That's how I do it. It's you calories. Calories are king because your body's always going to know how much it needs. It doesn't matter if just like, oh, just a little bit more, a little less. Your body knows. It doesn't matter if you're lying. Your body knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. Then we do protein. And then it's about carbs and fats. And it's, those are my fluid things because it, it's, doesn't have to be exact. This is where the freedom comes in. Right. Freedom. And that's what exactly what they are. Protein, carbs, fats are macronutrients. Okay. And that is what makes balance. You need to have all three in your meals. Carbohydrates. Yes. They're grains, they're breads, they're fruits and vegetables. And to balance it out, if you, you're just like, I don't want to even start like getting apps or counting or anything. I just want to start having a more balanced meal. You can look at your plate. Okay. Oh, okay. And maybe do, I always like to say half your plate and vegetables if possible. I mean, okay. I haven't done that yet in the last week. Okay. It's been (laughs) the groceries getting over the holidays. Like, let's just be honest, but you know, have a salad, have some roasted vegetables, have a, I just bought a fruit and veggie tray because it's just easier to throw that on the table and we're all getting our veggies in. It doesn't have to be homemade all the time. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. You have your protein, which is your meat or whatever it is that you want and your car, like your healthy fats. So that could be a little bit of avocado. You could have a little bit of oil on your salad, your salad dressing. There's a healthy fat mayonnaise on your sandwich. I love mayonnaise. I'm never going to give that shit up. Oh, sorry. I swore. I don't know. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, express yourself. There we go. Uh, (laughs) Pizza. Pizza has a carb, fat, and protein. You got to balance me. Why does it have such a bad rap though, Randa? We overeat it. We overeat it. And a lot of it has more cheese than necessary. Let's just be honest. But what I recommend, because I'm the kind of person, I don't get hungry. You can't fill this. So especially with pizza, I can eat a whole pizza, no problem. So yeah. Okay. So have a slice or two. Okay. Then maybe go have a veggie tray and have some vegetables with it. Like that, that's going to So you're not you depriving. Up. You're saying, not Hey, I'm going to have pizza. I'm just going to like, like, let's, let's, let's fill up the other, like half of hunger with some other good stuff. Let's get some vegetables in us. One that's helps with fiber Two that it's going to help keep us full. And we also yeah. feel good. We're like, look at me with my carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so healthy, but I get again, the quick fix. Cause it's like, Oh, I ate healthy for a day. Did I lose 10 pounds overnight? And that's not going to happen. No. You might not even lose weight for the first two weeks. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. But then you're going to all of a sudden drop it. Usually, listen, you don't want to lose more than two pounds a week. I aim for clients one and a half, one to one and a half. And sometimes it's less. It really depends because everyone is different. If I have them and they're losing uh, one and a half pounds a week, but they were hungry, I'm going to have to eat more. Yeah. You don't want to go to bed starving. That's One, your body telling you're you. More you like, more. Yeah. And you're more likely to get up and then raid the pantry. And, oh, here's a handful of chocolate chips. Oh, I want some crackers. And you just start all of a sudden you ate just 500 more calories. Than you need to. And you're, you didn't even sit down to eat them. You just, they're all out of your hand and you don't even realize you ate it. So I haven't personally had it with clients where they hadn't lost weight in two weeks. I'm just saying it could happen, especially if you started a new workout program with it, because sometimes you your body's going to hold on to the water yeah. and your muscles are sore. So that's why I say that. Usually it's at least half a pound that first week um, because you're still learning and there's going to be, oh, I went over this day because I didn't understand something. Cool. Let's do this again tomorrow. That's not a big deal. There's no right or wrong way to do it when you work with me and do this food freedom program because it's all an experiment. But as long as you keep within the numbers, you're going to lose weight because your body knows. <laughs> right? Let me ask you a question, Randa, because it sounds very, very much in line with the effort diet. Have you heard about the effort diet? Heard of it? I haven't looked into it. I don't know the details of it. Okay. It's, it's a lot like, it's a lot like what you're saying, you know, um, it's almost like saying, okay, you, you do what you do. You eat the way your body wants to eat. And then you have something that, you know, fills your bucket for that moment. Let's say we had an emotional day or we had a bad homeschool day. I'm going to throw in a turtle. Well, that's my love language. I love turtles. And then 
I keep going like it never happened as opposed to, oh God, I just screwed up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat 10 more turtles. I'm going to eat toffee fate. Let's add some chips to it because I need to you know, balance it out with some salt, <laughs> right? Um, instead of doing that, like just saying, hey, I had a turtle. Fine, I'm going to have a glass of water now and have salad my next meal. From what I've heard, it's very much that same mentality. So it must be the case that um, this mentality is a is a healthier way of of living. It's it's not so extreme, and I, that's I I think that's where I love your program is that, you know I I have tried Jenny Craig in the past. One I've tried to wait. Jenny, like yes, that's Jenny. my childhood, and I remember <laughs> that little jingle. Oh my god, the jingle! When it hit two thousand, it was Jenny, Jenny two thousand, or Jenny zero zero, or something. No, yeah, they had different songs for the different calorie. Oh, stop it. Mm-hmm. So I did that uh, jingles and everything. I did it all. I did it all. Did Weight Watchers. I mean, I, and I have like, I, you know what, all the power to anybody who does any of those things that could commit to it. But the truth is I wasn't living because Mm -hmm. while everyone was eating together at restaurants, I'd have my little, you know, my little, you know, tray, my little tray. It was like the size of everybody's like, Oh, I know I did. I did nutrition system when I was 19. Oh, I did that too. I did. Yeah. It was disgusting. Yeah. So we're so much, no, I don't like it either. So we're a lot of like in that we've tried it all. Oh, I've tried and, it all guys. Yeah. All. Uh-huh. But what I love about where you went with it is obviously you educated yourself with it. Yes. Now, did you try all these things while you were educated? No. Or was this okay? No, I tried them all before. Ah. Yeah. I, I started school and then I quit because honestly, I didn't believe in myself. I finished school. I had to write my final exam. And then I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And I quit. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you quit, you quit your program. Wait, say that again. I, I, I quit my schooling. Yeah. Right. When I was going to write my final exam, I already did all the work and I quit. <laughs> and then, um, a couple of years ago, like when Viv was born, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish it. And I did, I started all over again oh. with a different school and just started educating myself. So there was always education along the way, but yeah, when I was doing all the big fad diets, there was no education there. I was, um, I was just doing what people were saying, what was working because I wanted that hope. And yeah, and I have to say, um, Weight Watchers, I don't care for Weight Watchers either. And I'm going to say why the other day I had a comment on my blog. I had a smoothie delicious, full of fruits, vegetables. Like I love your smoothies. Nice, nice delicious smoothie. And someone said, mm. this smoothie's 14 points. This, that's really high. Um, how, how do you think this is healthy? It was 347 calories with 10 grams of protein or eight, whatever, a high amount of pro or not um, fiber, sorry, and protein. And it, it was balanced. And I'm like, this is what that problem is. You have these foods that are healthful and will nourish you. And mm. you're like, Oh, can't have that. I remember in high school, a friend would eat pickles all day. Cause there were zero points. Leaves pickles. It's so sad. And, and that's it's sad because we, we did it too, right? Mm-hmm. We tried it and we know that we're depriving ourselves. When you're restricting a fruit or a vegetable, cause there's too much sugar or too much carbs is a problem. I would be jealous that my kid was eating apples. My other kid, you know, I mean, I'd I'd be looking, I, it's sad. And, you know, and I'm telling you my, so my daughter was on the keto diet. She's kind of dirty keto. I mean, it's by choice. She's not just, she just doesn't love rice and, 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 and pasta and all that stuff, but she will eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and stuff. Maybe, maybe we'll have another podcast on how to get your kids to eat more vegetables. We'll talk about that later, but, (laughs) but, but that's my kid. But I, I do find that, I was envying people who ate vegetables and fruit because in the keto world, that's kind of like X and ish. She was kind about it, I believe. And she said, am I doing the wrong thing? Am I on the wrong diet? Okay. And she said diet. And I was like, oh. my heart broke <laughs> her. And I reached out for her and I was just like, no, oh. you know, it's 347 calories. This isn't, yeah. this isn't huge. It's, it's a, it's an anti-inflammatory smoothie. If anyone's wondering, it has spinach and apples and stuff in it, like hemp hearts and stuff. It's, it's good stuff for you. That is good stuff. It's good stuff for you. And it's, it just, it broke my heart that ingredients that really help you. She was like, no, but maybe, Mm -hmm. and again, I don't know how Weight Watchers works anymore, but she's like, but if you went to a fast food joint, had some fries, maybe she could have that instead because it was less points. 
not that, and, and she never said that, but I'm, I'm no. just like grasping. Yeah. And again, not again, nothing wrong with some fast food either. I tell, cause like I primarily work with busy mamas. We don't have time to make everything homemade all the time. Yeah. And I love me some A&W. Ah, like, buddy you know, burger. Yes. I, I'm a mama burger girl and mm. mama burger, no cheese. I mean, <laughs> that's just, it's Bloody like, burger, double the cheese. <laughs> right? Oh, but again, I teach you to fit this in your day. Yes, we yeah. track what we eat. And if you're wanting to lose weight, you're going to have to track what you eat. Like you just need to know how much you're eating versus your day. It's a tool. You don't have to do it for the rest of your life, but it's a good way to know. It's also a good thing to know if you're eating not as much as you should be. I have a oh, client oh. right now. She hasn't, she's ate more food than she's ever had and she's lost weight. She wasn't eating enough. Wow. She lost seven inches off her stomach. Oh my God. Just her stomach. Like I, I'm not even going to get into the rest of it. She's, she's eating more than she ever has. Sign me she up. She wasn't eating enough. She wasn't I think that's enough. actually my problem right now. Okay. So I'm going to bring this up because I just love playing devil's advocate. Um, yeah. Intermittent dieting, intermittent fasting. What are your thoughts? I think if you're hungry, you should eat when you're hungry. Okay. I don't think there's something, to, I don't believe it's a, something that's terribly wrong. Okay. Okay. But because you're still getting your calories for the day in, you're just getting it in for a smaller time. Yeah. However, if you are starving and you're like, no, I can't eat for another three hours. I can't eat until it's 12 o'clock. And you're like gripping the table. Like I'm so hungry. You should eat when you're hungry. Okay. Okay. That, that's my, my opinion on it. If you don't, if you're starving yourself until, you know, a particular time, you might overeat because you're so hungry, yeah. right? It's like, still a little bit of a deprivation if it yeah, starts to feel like it. You're like, I need to eat everything. And then I'll, you're not sitting down and you're just like panic eating, right? You're not. Yeah. Until 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah. So if it works for you, it works for you. If you're hungry, eat. Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm not hungry in the morning. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm not a big breakfast eater myself. No. Yeah. I, and I'll eat a nice hearty lunch and I'll be proud of it. Cause I'll be like, this is healthy. This is balanced. I'm, I'm proud of myself, but I didn't eat breakfast, but it's probably, be, it's because of mama's got ADHD and I've got eight, what? Th- we I've got about got- 8 million things going on in the morning. I can barely think about going to the bathroom, let alone cooking something up for myself so you know i've got my parents i'm kind of you know thinking of you know taking care of my mama then i've got my kiddos you know and i've got meds all over the place for my daughter and it's just so much going on before i know it it's noon but going by what you said i'm not feeling deprived i'm just i'm just busy um and that actually you know brings me to the next and final question being busy moms it's okay to sometimes you know grab the fast food or you know some subway whatever but, but in general, I mean, that's obviously not something we want to do every day, but in general, what can you recommend for busy moms to, or, or moms like me who don't love the kitchen? Yeah. You know, what can we do to kind of like ensure we're getting all that balance and getting all the nutrients without that prep? My kids are eating dinner at eight sometimes because I, it's, I can't get started after homeschool, taking care of my mom, all that fun stuff. I can't do that. I can't prep uh, this big epic meal at you know, 4 p.m. So I'm kind of in this boat too okay. right now. Um, in an, another life, I had another blog a long time ago, not even like the Bewitching Kitchen. It was a big food blog and I, I would cook all the time, but I'd be tired, but I do it. Where now like that pressure's off and I'm like, if I'm tired, it's like oh, something easy. Let's just do something easy tonight. Okay. And there's been a lot of something easies. Um, first of all, I really do like meal prep and I'm not saying cooking all your food ahead of time. I mean, when you get home from the grocery store, you walk, wash and chop your veggies then. So that way, when it's time to cook, you can just throw it in a skillet and the casserole, it's done. I love um, your reels. Follow Randa on IG. Her prep, you know, when you pick it up right from the grocery store, yeah. when you prep it, life-changing. Love it. I follow it. I absolutely follow it. it, it, it like, I like it with bell peppers. I slice them because mm-hmm. you can have them as a snack. And then I don't mind giving them a quick dice if I need to dice them in something. Um, yes. Frozen. Frozen onions are a game changer. They're t- okay. I just don't want to cut the damn onion. 
they, that, I don't know. It's so simple, but frozen onions are really great. Uh, same with like, if you're going to make a soup, they have frozen mirepoix. So that's, um, onions, carrots, celery all chopped up. So base of a soup and that way you don't have to cut things. I love um, that. I'm a lazy cook guys. This, this is just how I do it, but yeah. Okay. Don't feel bad if you have to run to, uh, booster juice and get something or a w or whatever. Um, if you're going to go eat out, I like to look at the menu beforehand and I do choose healthier options. I'm, I'm not like a cream lover. So like when I order pasta, it always is a tomato base okay. or if I am going out for dinner, cause it's so rare, especially now. So with my husband, I'm getting a steak. Like It's just what it is, mm. but I, I, I prep for that ahead of time. So I actually plan my dinner first if I'm okay. going out for a special occasion and then I fill in the rest of my day. Smart. But anyway, but busy moms back, back to that. Um, I'm going to say something that might be controversial, especially as a nutritionist is do it. Not all processed food is bad. Well, see, that's music to my ears. Okay. Talk to me. Why, why and how the difference between you having say like this amazing meal bowl that has pre-cooked chicken. Maybe it's like the deli rotisserie chicken or you cooked up chicken breasts, or I just bought the Lily Bedale sliced Turkey breast. that I'm going to throw on something after this. And you're using that. And maybe like the Uncle Ben's, like the bistro, like the stuff you microwave. Yeah. For a grain, that's 90 seconds versus having to cook a pot of rice that takes yes. forever. Sometimes we need these shortcuts and it's okay. I buy my broccoli pre done because I hate cutting broccoli. It's more expensive. So, I mean, if it's in your budget, go for it. Um, I, I try to take as many shortcuts as I can. And my meals aren't always great. Like I did an Instagram story the other day. For lunch, we had, we had Campbell's vegetable soup. You guys, I remember I have picky eaters too. I had Campbell's. Vegetable She's human soup. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's like no protein in that. So I had Dave's killer bread with butter. Cause my daughter won't eat meat right now on her sandwich. Dave's killer bread has five grams of protein per slice. So if you have a little kid, like a two, three, like they need around 20 grams of protein a day. That's half their grams of protein. Yeah. And country harvest in Canada mm-hmm. um, is the same. Okay. And it's less this money. Good to know. Oh, good. So, and the fiber's great. Mm-hmm. So we had bread, butter and soup. Is it the best option? No, it's not loaded with vegetables, even though it's vegetable soup, but it filled us. There was no fighting because sometimes we got to pick our battles. Right. And it was still actually balanced. Butter had fat, carbs, protein. Um, all the things. Soup and sandwich. Well, I'm trying to think of just quick, easy things that we've been eating lately. Uh, breakfast, breakfast for dinner works. Breakfast for dinner. Let's do that. I love okay. breakfast for dinner. Okay. You know, it's, I think it's just about just being, creative. being creative. Being yeah, creative. Yeah. Take the pressure off. You know, what? everything has to be this Pinterest meal. No. Right. Sometimes it's fun, but take the pressure off you. If you're just throwing things in a skillet and calling it good broccoli slaw from the store throw it in a skillet, add your pre-cooked chicken, a little sriracha, whatever, honey, sriracha, you got to stir fry within 10 minutes. So funny. My brother was here for the holidays and he left some slaw and I'm like, where the heck do I do with this thing? And so I'm, I've been staring at this, <laughs> at this bag. I'm so glad you brought this up. Yes. Yeah, stir fry. Throw yeah, it in. The bowl is really good too. <sighs> Again, I love anything with mayo. So I'm, I have on my Instagram reels, I have a lazy egg roll on a bowl and it's like ground pork or you ground chicken, ground turkey, whatever it was, slaw, broccoli, slaw, coleslaw, whatever you fry it up. I think I put some coconut aminos, which is like soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil, some ginger, garlic, mm. and I used powder. Cause I wasn't chopped. Like this was a no chop thing. So I was using powdered stuff. And instead of making my own spicy mayo, I bought the Hellman spicy mayo and threw it on there. It was ready within 10 minutes and it's, it's so good. So oh, good. that sounds delicious. I'm, I'm going to be listening to this recording and I'm going to be taking notes. This is what we're going to have for dinner tonight. 10 minutes, please. I think that's the biggest thing is like the lack of time and the busyness. And that's why I love that you, you know, you're really speaking to the busy mom um, because I think that's part of our challenge, especially here during the pandemic, even though we're home, we're even busier than ever because we've got 
school to worry about. We've got a, we've got meltdowns to worry about, you know, and, and online obsessions and trying to do the song and dance to keep them off, offline. So there's a lot going on in a day. So to cook these epic meals and to be the Martha Stewart's of our home is really, really tough. It's really I, tough. I appreciate a good slow cooker thing. That's no effort. Yes. We need a lot of beef dip because I control yes. that in the slow cooker. Um, oh any, anything just to make your life easier. Okay. I will, if you want to make things more healthful, yeah. start by adding, just throw an extra veggie in something. Easy. You know, you can start small. You don't have to go balls to a wall with a new pro- program. You can do things simple, one step at a time, add more vegetables. I'm all about adding in versus taking out. Taking out. Because yeah. when you're adding more in, you're going to be full and you're not going to eat as much as the stuff that you think you need to take out. Right. Well, I'm going to say you just said the magic word program. And so I think this is the perfect segue for you to talk to us about how food freedom your way works. Um, When you join the program, what are some of the what's just take us briefly through the process of what are we going to get out of it? I For mean, sure. I know what we're going to get out of it, but what's, what's the steps, I guess. What, yeah, what do we do? No, what, like what's in the actual program, right? Yeah. So I have three months of my coaching into okay. one program because not everyone can afford to work with me one-on-one all the time. So I wanted something that everyone could do. And in the program, there's, you know, a few different modules and stuff, but I go through setting goals, what your whys are, um, taking habits you want to change and actually doing it and how stacking mm-hmm. cues. So if you want to drink more water, maybe have water on your nightstand so you can drink it right away. when you first wake up, you're sick of you buying all your vitamins. Hacks. You never use them, Put put them there. But I know we don't like clutter on our counters. Just, just put them next to your coffee maker. Cause you're not going to skip that coffee and then you'll see your, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So th- things like that, things like hacks. If- have little hacks, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. how to still get some chocolate at night without eating the whole damn bag. Um, things like that. I go into how to figure out how many calories your body actually needs. Okay. So I take you through that calculation. I teach you about exactly what macros are into detail and how to calculate your macros for weight loss, maintenance, maybe weight gain, which is also muscle gain. So if you want to gain muscle, you need to do the weight gain one. And I also have breastfeeding in there as well. Um, and I have how to track them, you know, what apps to use, what, how to use it, how to turn recipes you see on the internet into these apps. So you can just click it and add it all at once and how to be successful with these apps, how to eat out at restaurants, how to, um, just, just get it. And realize that it's not, again, not balls to the wall, how to add in one new thing a week. And that's what I recommend on the, a lot of people always skip the welcome video. And yeah, in that welcome video, I say, I want you to do this on week one, this on week two. Mm-hmm. So it's not overwhelming. And I love that. Finish. Yes. And of Follow course the I have steps. bonuses too, right? Like, so I have eight recipe books in there. Um, like printable ones, like eBooks. Love and that. it's just, it, if you follow the steps, you will change. You'll exactly, you'll meet your goals, no problem. I love that. And it's very much, uh, you know, personalized, right? Like we, we, we it's would- It's customized to you. Customized to you. Oh, I love that. You know what foods you like to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I encourage you to add more fruits and vegetables. You, you're going to have to do that, but you don't have to take out the pizza, take out your tacos, take out your chocolate at the end of the night. And maybe a glass of wine while watching Grey's Anatomy while we cry uh, over whatever Shonda yes. made us cry over that week. <laughs> Eating without the emotion, but then still having the emotion. I love that. I know a lot of us say, don't eat in front of the TV. And yes, it's true. There is like a sympathetic, parasympathetic thing there. However, if after a long day with those kids, you are done. And you just want to sit in front of the TV and watch yes. the office or whatever and enjoy some popcorn. Please. And you plan that out throughout your day and be like, yeah, I'm going to do that. It is yeah. recommended when you're eating a big meal, you sit there without the technology, eat because your stomach will, you'll have better digestion, but right. a little bit of popcorn at the end of the night, enjoy your show. I love that. I love that you're integrating the person's life 
and their interests and their vices, like in a way, right? Like I do love my Netflix binge. Oh, it's yeah. true. I need a break from reality. I said this to George. I'm like, I can't watch any more news. I can't sit and talk about, you know, curriculum right now. I don't want to talk about the pandemic. I don't want to talk about anything real right now. I want to know if the bachelor found a girlfriend and if it's going to last longer than two months, that's what I want to know while I'm snacking on something. Yeah. Yummy. Crunchy. That's mm -hmm. usually what I'm looking for. Right. I'm savory. I know I was talking about chocolate, but honestly, I, I need savory in my life. And I think, I think that's really uh, something to be able to join a program where you can completely be yourself. I think that's the biggest thing is I haven't felt uh, myself in any of these fad diets I've tried. Keto was the closest thing as far as just, I do love my bacon. I do love my cheese. I love all this stuff, but I love my pasta. I love my rice and I love social eating as well, hanging out with my friends and not having a different plate. And so it's really nice to be able to integrate our life into, you know, with your program. So I wanted to also mention for my listeners, um, the wonderful Randa has offered a 20% discount um, using the code SAS and Smalls. I'm going to put that link um, on, on the show notes in the bottom of the show notes. And that's 20% off all digital products. So it's the, that's aside from the one-on-one -on -one coaching because your price is excellent. You've got great, yeah, you've got a great price point as far as the kind of service and the kind of results you'll get. So the fact that you are offering our uh, listeners 20% on the digital products, I really, um, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I will have that in the bottom of our show notes. Randa, can you tell us any either last thoughts, but also where our listeners can find you? Yeah, as women, we need 25 grams of fiber a day at minimum. Um, we're not getting it. Most of us nope. are not, especially when you're doing some of the fad diets like keto. Um, yeah, there, there are some things that we need as women for hormone health too, with our fats. Yes, and it's yes. important to get that. And I, I do cover that in the program too, but I, I just had to say that because I thought it was important because we, we neglect fiber so we much when we think of things mm -hmm. and it's like one of my favorite things to look at every day. So I'll just, I'll stop that there, but yeah, you can follow me. I'm everywhere at Randa nutrition, R A N D A, except for TikTok. right now. I keep going between Randa nutrition and then be like, no, I'm going to just make this personal, but I have nutrition <laughs> stuff on there. Um, it's at Randa Dirksen on TikTok, but Randa nutrition everywhere else. And we'll have these links um, in the show notes as well, because I really think you are such a love and such a service to the community and such a service to women um, specifically. Uh, and I, I can't speak for men, but for women, definitely. And definitely moms, because we have so much on our shoulders as far as, you know, the care for our kids and for ourselves. And it's just so easy to say, we're going to be, we're going to do better and we're going to take care of ourselves and all this. So it's nice that you're offering a hand to hold. I really appreciate that you are evolving um, and, and going with, with all the, cause I've, I've been following Randa since she was bewitched in kitchen and I just absolutely love your stuff, but you saw a need for this. Mm -hmm for hand-holding mamas. So I appreciate it. And if at, with Food Freedom Your Way, you're like, oh no, I need actual help. I need accountability. I have options where you can just book a call with me too. And things like that, they are an added cost, but they're super, super affordable. I made it so we can, sometimes you need that. You need that. Yes. Support. It's funny, we, we, we call our therapists, right? You yeah. know, and sometimes you need someone who can give you just like the, the straight up, okay, let's talk about food. Because if this is where you're turning to, let's talk about it as opposed to the purpose behind it. We could also talk about the actual food because it's something that we deal with on a daily basis, right? So I do love that. I am really excited to take this journey and share it on my platform. I don't like to have guests here that I can't, absolutely utilize for myself. So I, I will definitely share my journey as well, not just with my followers, but also with you, Randa, you know, I love that you're so accessible. Thank you so much for everything and being super open and vulnerable. 
And I loved hearing the the sounds of the little munchkins in the background. I love that you're a mom and you can absolutely relate to all of us. So with that said, let's continue this day. It's funny. It's what is it? Two o'clock. I have a couple of hours. Maybe I might throw in something in my slow cooker. I'm going to, I'm going to look go. at some of your recipes. <laughs> there you go. Get it done. Thank you, Randa. Welcome. I need my sass back. Signing off. See ya guys. Bye. Signing off. See ya. Bye.